Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Manette, where we gather to work with what I call visual journaling, which is a unique and playful way to bring introspection, reflection, healing, whatever it is that we need in the moment, play to the page in a way that helps us get to know ourselves better, but doesn't, and I'm still messing with my camera this morning, sorry, but doesn't um, always have to feel, unless we need it to feel quite so, I don't want to say deep, because I do go deep in these pages, but I think because I'm playing with paint and paper and my own words, that there's a level of reflection that happens here that has me in the moment with, um, a little more openness and a lot more curiosity. Good morning, Barbara. So I'm going to follow kind of a rhythm of how I love to do my own visual journaling practice this morning. And I started by just getting still for a couple of minutes and leaning into a color palette that was really calling to me. So I have a lavender, an olive green, a brilliant blue and a bright yellow here. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Love seeing all these good mornings. Nikki, Mary, and Judy, welcome, welcome. I've got some black because I'm probably going to do some stenciling, and I'm going to be working in a very abstract way and just being very curious on the page, and I think I'm really longing for some green and some spring colors. It's still very much winter here. And so I pulled some bright colors. We've had beautiful sunny days. I woke up this morning, we had crazy windstorms last night, but you know, to beautiful blue skies and most of the, the snow is melted and you know, it's melted for about three days and then it's all coming back. So I've been noticing my longing for green and just noticing what's underneath that. What are the feelings and emotions that I'm feeling that have me longing for, for green? Am I maybe feeling a little bit of seasonal affective disorder? I've been getting outside lots. Um, I also pulled, this is just a, a piece of um, deli paper that looks like I cleaned a brayer off on it. I had a friend that uh, gifted me a bunch of stuff, so I just grabbed this envelope and it's got look at these fun napkins with the faces on them what else we got in here we've got some looks like some origami and collage papers here so i've got a stack of collage materials look at those beautiful what a fun napkin that is a stack of collage materials some napkins some paint I also just grabbed a bunch of different stencils. I was feeling especially drawn this morning to these letters that um, were cut out on a big die cut machine at my friend Andrea's studio. And I love these big blocky letters and a few just other things that I pulled out here. But you know that I always love starting with words. And I'm just going to be working on one side of my spread. And so I'm going to come in and just put some of my own words down on the page. I'm doing that with a, just a plain old inexpensive ballpoint pen because I love the way it bleeds through some of those layers later. I'm working in an old book that you know has been repurposed and I've used it. This one's been going for a couple of years and I found it in my stash and I'm like, oh, I wanna finish this one up. So I pulled this one out and I wanna spend the next couple of weeks really looking at how I use visual journaling for my own healing transformation and just to lift my spirits when they need to be lifted or maybe when they're already high to be in celebration of that. So what I'm noticing is that I'm longing for spring. I'm wanting green, that there seems to be a need for more green. And we have travel coming up, but not until April. So I'm sort of holding on until we go to Asheville, North Carolina. 
Um, and underneath that feeling of green is maybe some newness, something fresh. What in my life might feel stale right now? And you notice I'm writing sideways it's because I'm left-handed, and it's actually the normal way I write. If I want to write across the page this way, I often have to turn my, my page, but it'll make for interesting marks having the writing going a different direction. So what in my life feels stale and needs a good airing out? It was warm enough on Saturday to have our windows open just briefly. It was in the 50s to bring fresh air into the house. My studio is feeling very fresh. We bought a 16-foot table um, and some fun chairs from an auction. So my other side of my studio has this beautiful table for my art retreat that's coming in May. Super excited about that, and that meant that I got a better table here for my live streaming. So some things are feeling fresh. We got a new housekeeper who just did a deep clean. So there's this sense of longing for fresh air, for movement. We went up a beautiful drive up a gorgeous canyon here yesterday, about an hour away. Just fresh perspective. You know, sometimes spring, it feels like we're coming out of hibernation and getting that fresh perspective. So just um, allowing myself to sit in the question of what feels stale, maybe what seeds have I already planted that I'm waiting to start to show their little bit of buds above the ground. And if I were writing on my own, I would probably spend quite a bit of time doing some journaling. Good morning, Kay, and filling up the page. But this started with the question of what are the colors that I'm leaning into this morning? So I started with color. And now I'm going to come in and just put some blocks of color down on the page. And I picked mostly cool colors, but something in me wanted that little pop a sunshiny yellow, but I think I'm just going to start with this blue and purple and just get some color down on the page. Maybe come in with this brayer and see. When I'm doing these under layers, I love not using a paintbrush, but using a brayer or a scraper, moving the paint around. I love that there's a funny little pop of that hot pink that bled over from a different page, just letting that be on the page. So again, just feeling that need for some vibrant, right? Some vibrant color. Let's get a little bit of this green down on here. Don't care that I'm coloring up that writing. That writing was just for me, not for anyone else. And I often work with my private clients this way to sort of get them more connected to what's going on within. So sometimes if you're feeling like, oh, like I was in a, a I have a spiritual group that I belong to and, you know, was just commenting last week that I was just feeling this sort of general sense of malaise or sadness and there was no real reason for it, which got me to thinking about okay, is this just a weather thing, right? Am I just really, is this what it means to <clears throat> get the winter blues and never having lived any place where there is really winter before, you know, it's um, or even any place that had long rainy seasons. I was looking for a clip to clip my page, but I'm not seeing one right here. You know, so just noticing how can I bring that to the page, and so this page is feeling sort of uh, divinely messy here, and I'm wanting to maybe even bring some more white onto that page, just putting a little bit of gesso on here. Again, this is letting go, right? Letting go of those under layers, letting go of the mess. My friend Pat, who lives in the English countryside was posting a photo of orange blossoms on her social media. And I thought, oh, orange blossoms, I'm so far away from that. 
and what's hilarious is that, you know, we moved here from Santa Barbara and um, it snowed in Santa Barbara this week up in the, in the mountains, in the hills above Santa Barbara. So I'm having fun just really creating a messy page. What I'm noticing is those vibrant colors still feel like they're underneath, not um, quite rising to the surface yet. So just bringing in a little bit of that yellow. Not a lot of clarity here I'm noticing, right? This is sort of a, a bit of a, a messy page, not a super neat page. And I'm just letting the page evolve, letting the page tell the story, right? Of where it is I need to go, where I want to go. And let's see, wondering if it might be fun to just scribe through that page, just come in and make some marks. I don't knit, but when my stepmother passed away years ago, I got a bunch of her and her mom's old stitching and knitting needles. And so I keep them around They're They're useful in the studio. So I love when I come and sort of you know, scratch through, look at that, you know, there's bits of that purple coming through. Maybe I want a little more of that purple and that blue to show. And it's such a powerful reminder that all those colors are there. It seems like my lights have moved and I have more glare than usual. We completely, uh, we're re rearranging the studio this weekend. So everything feels a little bit different, but there's that freshness. I've always loved rearranging furniture and moving things around and making them feel new. So what I'm noticing now is just wanting to bring that purple back to the surface even more, right? Bring that purple back to the surface even more. And just so allowing myself to have some fun moving the paint around. I'm working kind of wet on wet, so things are going to flow together. If I'm not careful, I will get some mud on the page here with that lavender and green would probably make a really beautiful brown. But I have enough brown in my life right now, right? Like other than the beautiful spruce and pine trees and the spruce are beautiful, but they're this funny, very gray green. And I think what I'm longing for is that fresh grass green, right? That really beautiful spring green. So now I have this kind of messy, chaotic page. And I'm feeling like next I want to come in and add some stencils over the, the top of that. So I am going to grab some just plain black paint. And a makeup sponge. And you notice I'm just dumping all that extra paint right here. I can e even use this page as a palette because it can just become a surface that I get to respond to at a different moment in time. And I'm wondering, with being drawn to so much writing and to these letters this morning, it's like, you know, what, what's bubbling up in me that um, wants to be said, right? What's bubbling up in me that wants to be said? Are there words? I've been thinking a lot more about writing in my own journaling practice, and I've gotten a little away from my morning writing practice, so looking for some fun new ways that maybe I can incorporate writing right back in to my art making. And it helps when I pause to just do those few minutes of journaling on the page to just notice, where am I at today? And this is why I am such a fan of just mindfulness practices of any kind, whether it's mindful meditation, coloring our sacred circles, or doing this type of visual journaling. It's just 
gets me into the moment where I can pause and go, oh, that's how I'm feeling. That's why I'm feeling this way. What is going on underneath the surface this morning? That if I don't pause and take time, I can find that anxiety builds, grief builds, Like my husband and I both got up yesterday and we were so clear that what we needed most was just that fresh perspective and opportunity to just get out of the house, just to get out of the house. So again, building up layers, allowing the page to guide me that I don't have to be so determinate all the time about direction that I'm going and that I'm usually pretty happy with results. Look at this pretty little stencil. That's one from my friend Andrea Shebelu with all these different little circles on here. Love these little abstract circles. Just brightening these up with some white. So I notice that I put down the darks and then I'm coming in and feeling that longing to brighten them up again, right? That it's like every time I come in with the dark, then I'm coming back in again with the white. So clearly what I'm longing for is more of that lightness, right? More color, but also lightness of spirit, right? So thinking about where maybe have I been feeling a little bit of a heaviness? <clears throat> and what's the origin of that heaviness? Because nothing's wrong, right? Nothing's wrong. And I think this is why doing this work is so powerful. Because oftentimes we have feelings rising to the surface, sometimes just because they're ready to be released, right? They're just ready to be released. Sometimes it's seasonal. Right? And sometimes we really don't know, but it's important that we just pause on a regular basis, if not daily for a few minutes, then a few times a week that we just pause and notice how we're feeling. All right, so I think I'm going to come in with some collage and build up some layers here. And I'm feeling, well, let's see what this does when we get some of this. On here, I love deli paper because it does create some nice transparency in the layers. These may be too similar in color to what I have on the page, but we'll see as we get it down there. Again, even in my collage materials, I was drawn to that same color palette this morning. How's everyone else this morning? So I'm doing a lot of the a lot of the talking. Am I saying anything that's resonating or how are you feeling this morning? What's on your heart this morning? I'd love to hear some other voices than just my own. And I'm feeling very drawn to these little faces on here, so I'm thinking one of these faces on here is going to be wonderful. Just have to decide which one. I'm kind of drawn to this princess in the corner down here this morning. And of course I left my met medium on my other table, so bear with me for a second. And again, in the chat, I'd love to hear, how are other people feeling this morning? I took a beautiful class this weekend that I had purchased with one of my favorite artists, a journal making class, and I spent a lovely long afternoon yesterday prepping pages for a new journal. And it had been a long time since I had just gotten out big sheets of paper and just played with paint, which kind of inspired this morning's session of just giving myself permission to play on the page.
right? Recent feelings of sadness, but no reason. Mmm, a flower show. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. I would love a flower show. I've been watching also the, the Denver Museum of Art to see, waiting for an exhibit that would inspire me with some color as well. And we had raining here, but the grass is turning green. Lucky you, Judy, I love it. We had friends for dinner on Saturday and they brought me the most gorgeous bouquet of yellow roses and there were a couple other things in there and even some beautiful purple thistles and I can't tell you how happy it's making me to look at these beautiful flowers. Just that bright spot of colors. Fresh flowers are definitely a mood booster for sure. Just throwing down colors is a refuge from your busy mind. Yes, yes, it is such a refuge. And you can put all that busyness right onto the page and that your mind will come back into focus. So I'm working with this little piece of napkin and when you're collaging with napkin, these napkins tend to be double ply and you wanna get it down to just that top surface and then you can get it on there better, but I'm struggling to get this one apart this morning. And I really do think of the page, whether I'm journaling or just coloring with markers or painting like I'm doing today, it is a refuge. It is a refuge. It is a safe place. We can create that safe place for ourselves on the page. There we go. Okay, that took a minute. All right. And these little lovelies are oftentimes tricky to get down on the surface. If you've never collaged with paper napkins, they do, they're wonderful to play with because of their transparency, but you do have to be a little bit tender with them. And since I'm feeling that little bit of tenderness this morning, it feels kind of appropriate to work with materials that allow for that tenderness. Yep, Barbara, totally get it. Grateful for that sunshine. And we have no lack of sunshine in Colorado. I think that's one of the things that has really made the, the winter um, bearable. Like yesterday, I think it was, you know, right at freezing when I went for my walk, but the sun was so <laughs> incredibly warm that, you know, no hat, no, I think I ended up taking my gloves off. All right, love getting her down on the page, but now feeling like I'm wanting to bring back some splashes of color, maybe even a little bit of journal writing, but maybe I'm gonna come in and see if I can bring back some of this yellow. This tube is almost empty, and I love this Amsterdam. This is the Azo Yellow Deep from Amsterdam. And I'm coming in with my fingers because it feels like fun, right? And what I'm wanting is that spring energy, that sort of bursting forth, right? And so just by allowing my fingers to get in on the action here, my inner child is like, okay, yes, more of that, please. So again, just brightening up the page. And it's so funny because it's like, whoa, that's bright. And maybe that's almost too bright and brighter than I want. So in typical Manette fashion, I'm going to lay down all that paint and then I'm going to push it all back. A little more subtle. 
And I think I'm going to come in and paint her, but I need her to get nice and dry first, but wanting to bring that face out into the page and definitely needing some more collage elements on here yet, but not quite sure what that looks like. I was definitely drawn to these swatches of color, which might be fun because I'm feeling sort of all the colors, right? Just feeling into, look, there's my color palette that I'm kind of using, but I'm maybe wanting to bring in some of these brighter colors because spring is coming. I think that's, you know, such the the powerful reminder about working with the energy and colors of the seasons is that and even the, the, the cycles of the moon, the cycles of the sun day to day, right? Everything is fresh and starts over anew again. And sometimes we get so caught up in it's all going to be the same all the time. And just to remind ourselves that there's a new day dawning every day. Hi, kitty cat. You want to come say hello? Come on. George is going to come play along, <clears throat> excuse me, for a little while this morning. All right, so I don't know if I want all of this or part of this. But it's definitely feeding into my longing for more color this morning. But I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, maybe even put it on a couple of different pages, places on the page. See what happens when we bring in some of that color over the top. Paper napkins are hard to cut. They don't cut very straight. All right. So maybe she's just being sort of birthed out of this sort of pool of color here. And I love starting this practice in a moment of stillness connection, just noticing how am I feeling right here, right now, and then follow that moment of stillness with a little bit of gathering, just flipping through my stash, you know, taking just five minutes to gather supplies, pick my color palette, and come in to the process feeling like things are a little bit sorted can get us sometimes going a little bit easier than if we don't pause to do that little bit of sorting. If I were just playing with markers or colored pencils, it's not as necessary to do that. It's somehow it just um, provides that nice frame and light, Barbara, around the, the edges, right? You know, just sort of pulling that, that light together. It just felt like the right thing to do. Again, I did it intuitively, not intentionally. And so much of this process for me is about learning to relax into the journey, to let go of any expectations. Like when I'm working on canvas, I usually have an idea of what I'm painting, or I've been doing my 100 days of artsy animals, right? And I have a, an animal in mind sometimes, and it's a very different practice than this practice of what I call visual journaling. Interesting, I'm not loving these bright colors down here, but that might change when I add some colors to her, or it feels like I wanted more of the, the purples down here. So I think I'm actually going to just pull some of that off. I think if I take my scraper, I can just scrape that right back off. I like the color there, but it's not needed here. In fact, what's missing now is some of that purple down here in the corner. Let me clean off my 
scraper here. And I love it just fit better with the, the yellows up on the edge. So again, just working super intuitively, like there's no rhyme or reason, there's no plan. I am going to come in and give my little person here some color. Maybe. Probably going to want a little bit of white. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a nice flesh tone going here. So a little pink, a little white. I love this. Um, I've had this one forever. This is a, a paper artsy butternut color, but it makes a, a great skin tone when it's blended. And I'm thinking about what color do I want her crown to be. Maybe that's going to come in with some more of that yellow. But I'm going to start with getting some color down on her face and just uh, have a little fun with just some painting. And looking for a pretty small brush to work in that detail. And I'm going to hit this with my dryer just for a second, get that napkin really dry under that matte medium so that I do have a nice dry surface to paint on so that I don't destroy the napkin itself when I start to add layers. And I can see where, you know, it hasn't gone down as it had a little bit of a bubble there. And if you overheat this, if you get the dryer too close, uh, it will make your acrylic paint bubble. So be mindful of that. So Barbara, I love that about you're trying to do it intuitively and you get to the teenage stage. I love that kind of that messy middle stage and so and don't know where to go next I have that happen all the time and usually for me it's going over it with gesso or a solid color and um, just pushing the background back that usually just means that I've gotten it's gotten too busy or even gesso over part of it can help as well I'm going to come in here and just give her a little bit more character. I don't have to paint her completely. Again, you have seen me before. I love, you know, taking a drawing and adding that in. Um, and Barbara, I also agree that, you know, walking away is one of my sort of best tricks for that right of just stepping away from it for a day so now I've added some of that sort of pale pink so I'm just adding a little bit more of that around the page again so we want these you know colors to really move my eye around the page if I have one color clustered anywhere stepping not stomping yes stepping not stomping but walking away from your art is one of the, the best things that you can do and look at it with fresh eyes. Even five minutes away can make a difference. Holding it up away from you at arm's length. Is another trick for getting perspective when we get up too close to it we can no longer you know see the the details and so
hold it up, look at it from a distance. So she's coming together nicely here. Once she's dry, I'm going to probably come in with a Stabilo Marxol pencil. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon me for coughing in your ear. And bring back a little bit of the, the shadow and the detail. And I'm wondering if the crown should be purple or maybe her hair should be purple and the crown should be yellow. So let me just bring a little bit of that purple in and try it. If I don't like it, I can always paint it out. So again, I'm just sitting with my own process and my own practice. She has this sort of soulful look on her face. I love hair, so I'm probably going to pull that hair out even more. I think these look like maybe uh, Dana Week Wakely drawings. Starting to just bring her to life and make her my own with this uh, simple sketch, right? With this simple sketch. And so it's one of the things I love about using collage and taking it and really making it our own. My husband and I were talking about, you know, how long these episodes tend to be and uh, looking at seeing if I can shorten them up a little bit because I do, they do get long. But I noticed that my creative process, it takes about an hour, right, to do one of these pages. And once I get going, it's really hard to stop. Desire to add real and abstract faces. So napkins are a great way to do it. Starting with a stencil is a great way to do it, right? Something that just allows you to, to give that um, little bit of form, right? So that then you can go over it and make it your own. And I'm also wanting to have a little space for some journaling here on the page. One of the reasons we picked this time of morning to do this is because I was down here already anyway, and it just felt like the best time. So this is a awesome stencil by Megan uh, Quinlan, who you can find on Instagram. And uh, she has some great stencils made just for journaling in your journal. And I think I'm going to come back in with a little bit of that pink again. Still have some over here on my palette. And just create a little quiet space where I can come back in with some journaling here at the end. So tomorrow I want to do some work with using magazine words to create collage. So if you're coming tomorrow and want to play along, grab maybe a favorite poem or two, an old book, you know, anything that um, has some words in it that inspire you. And then we're going to come in and um, have some fun with words in our journals tomorrow. Just feeling like I want some of these little just quiet spaces on the page. And I have some spots I could add an inspiring quote or a word or two or just do some journaling here on the page. I want this one to be even maybe a little bit more 
transparent. So right now it's feeling like a little bit of a fussier page than I want in the background and I want some of my foreground to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to come back in with a solid color, maybe the yellow, and push a lot of this sort of busyness back to the background again. I want a little more transparency here, but not too much. I want to still be able to see some of what's going on. That might be more transparency than I wanted. So again, just trusting the layers, right? Trusting the layers. So I'm loving this, right? Like there's this desire for spring, for color. She has this sort of soulful look on her face. And what's sort of disappeared as I've worked and I'm looking is this beautiful brilliant blue, I think this was called. And this is a heavy body acrylic. So I'm going to water this down a little bit and see what happens if I bring some of that blue back to the page. But I want it to be pretty, pretty transparent. So I could do that with water. I could do that with a little bit of glazing medium or even matte medium because I don't want to lose all the beautiful texture and marks. But I do feel like that page is busy and I want this character in the corner down here to be the focal point and by just adding this sheer layer of color I can get her to stand out on the page. It completely changes that page when we come in. I can still see some of the yellow of the light shining through in some of the corners. I really like the, the napkin. This could even have some words or some marks on it. That tree was just feeling a little bit too black in there. And coming in around that edge of the, the napkin also and painting that out, then it makes our figure feel more part of the page. And now it's starting to feel like something. I don't know what yet that it's starting to feel like something. Um, I'm happier with the page. It definitely needs to get super dry now. I can see I still want this maybe to be a little bit more opaque down here. Let's see if we can scoop up a little bit of this color. I also want her, see if we've got more of her coming down onto the page. All right, so there's a story here. I'm not sure what the story is, but I'm just being present to that story unfolding. I'm going to come in and just bring back, you know, some of those features here. I'm thinking I want to add a little bit more green to the page or green to maybe to her eyes. I think because I have hazel eyes, I always tend to draw characters with hazel eyes. That's still pretty wet, but I'm thinking maybe just a little bit of that shadow here and here. It's amazing how just a little bit of black on the page can make everything stand out again from the background. It also brings back some of the sketchiness from that original drawing that I liked so much. I might even come in and add a little bit of that weight underneath these boxes. I'm definitely going to want to come in with some 
Posca markers and add some marks and patterns to the page, but I'm feeling pretty happy with where it is. And it's like Barbara was saying, it's like, okay, I can feel it's just about time to walk away, let it sit, let it get naturally very dry before I go in over the top with markers. But I need to let the page settle. And I need to let the story evolve. Sometimes I know the story right away. I had glimpses of that story in the beginning. I can definitely feel this um, wanting to bring in maybe a more dominant shape over the, the top of all of it to kind of pull it all together. But again, I can really feel that I need to stop. I need to pause. I need to let her get dry and walk away. I can get very caught up in, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I don't want to stop. And sometimes that's a disservice to myself and to my art. And then it makes me ask, where else in my life do I feel that need to just push through? Where do I feel that need to push through rather than giving myself permission to have the luxury of time and now I also have this fun page that I can create something different on. So it doesn't feel complete, but it feels complete for now. And you saw me go from a lot of chaos on the page to just a little bit more calm on the page. I can see that what it's needing is some white on here, maybe a little more pattern, a little more maybe color in her eyes, but it's a really good stopping place. So I'm going to pause this place, this page for now before I run it by being committed to overworking it. This one, Judy, I do too. I really love that corner up there as well. And um, again, I'm feeling like it's time to just take a pause, walk away, give it a break. Good morning, Yvonne. Thank you. I'm pretty happy with her. Thinking maybe the color on these isn't quite right, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to give myself permission to pause here and to come back to it later on this afternoon or some evening when I have some fun playtime on here as well. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs with Manette. And today we were talking about visual journaling as a way of just capturing emotions and feelings and creating more of what it is that we want on the page. I'll be back tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Thank you, Judy. My pleasure. I love being here with all of you in the morning, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.